Let's get to Apple now. The tech giant gearing up for its scary fast event tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's expected to unveil a new lineup of Macs, plus its next generation silicon chip, the M3. Apple shares are up into that keynote presentation. They're obviously coming off a tough stretch. But the unusual timing of the event has caught the eye of investors and analysts alike, including our next guest, who says the scheduling is very odd ahead of their Q4 results. Joining us is Needham senior analyst Laura Martin. Good to see you again, Laura. Welcome. A, a prime time tech show. I'm not sure I've seen one of these before. I'm very scared. I mean, this is Halloween a day early. I'm very scared about this event, Kelly. <laughs> so what do you think it's all about? Would, have they hurried it out? Are they trying to do something? Who, who, what is this really all about? Well, I think, good question. They just announced with Nike a big uh, sustainability push, and, and so maybe part of it is that. But also, I think they really need a refresh on the on the um, Mac. And so we're hoping they get a laptop with their new silicon, MP3 silicon chip. And so I think they're just trying to tie it in with Halloween because it's the day before Halloween. So they decided to do it eight at night your time and keep you guys all up late, working late overnight. <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest implication for investors? Do you think they can, despite all of the concern at Ajita, do you think they can come out and dazzle folks and kind of reignite uh, the next move up in the shares? Yeah, I think I think we're a little above the street on um, these laptop, the Mac Pro, MacBook Pro laptops, and I think that probably they're going to have a weak quarter on that. That's my read of why they're doing it today, three days before they do earnings, is they're going to have a very weak sort of um, tablet sales. And in order to allay that, they're front running that by this dazzling new show about what's going to come out. And so people sort of overlook a weak number from the, app, the, the, the laptop number when they report on Thursday. That's my read on the weird timing here. All right. Anything else you'd say? I want to ask you about Disney, but what, what else are you going to be listening for for, the, uh, for this evening's event, for Apple and even for or as we start to turn our attention towards earnings? Yeah, I'm really listening. I'm really listening for anything that has to do with China demand. You know, we're seeing channel checks saying that um, Chinese demand for the iPhone 15 is down 6% year over year. And as you know, the government in China sort of getting even with America for trying to you're threatening to kick out TikTok is saying Apple devices cannot be used in government buildings. So that geopolitical tension could really that China's 20 percent of Apple's unit sales. So anything having to do with China and the weakness in China, I'll be really listening carefully for. All right. And that kind of looms over whatever uh, we may hear this evening on Disney. Laura, uh, we do have this report that Ike Perlmutter is backing Nelson Peltz in his campaign there. Uh, what do you make of that? So no surprise, right, because he backed him last time, too, and they both are sort of almost, I'm going to call it enemies of Bob Iger, so I think it's a little personal here. But in fairness, I think Bob Iger, by committing $60 billion to theme parks, has completely sidestepped the issue about what about the core content business? And it's not growing, but he's not cutting costs. So I actually, shares are up today of Disney over 1%. I think that's deserved. I think these activists do the world, do shareholders a service by forcing CEOs to focus on the net, a trade, you know, an investor time frame, which is a year. What are they going to do to either cut costs or prove that they can grow this company faster in the core media business? And what would those moves look like? I mean, obviously he could. Would you rather see him kind of aggressively cutting costs and at least kind of bringing that into proportion? Or would you rather see some splashy moves on the content front that kind of make people feel better about the investment spend? The issue with the, the issue with the revenue line is it's out of his control. We've got strikes. He just pushed off two big movies for a whole year because he thinks he can't market without actors, pr pr you know, like um, promoting them. So they're pushing off the content, which is going to hurt their revenue in the near term. Mm. So, no, he can't really. I mean, it's harder for him to affect the revenue line with cord cutting and with the strikes having to do with movie releases. So he's got to cut costs. It, that's like the only thing that Bob Iger can control over here at Disney. And I think this bid by Nelson Peltz, uh, along with Perlmutter, is going to force him to do that, which I think is great for shareholders.